So we are at the next team in our season previews for 2024-25. It is the Montreal Canadiens today. Uh, we are officially at the halfway mark of these. We have, I think, 16 teams left after this, which is pretty cool. Uh, but regardless, the Montreal Canadiens are a team that has been rebuilding for the past three seasons. They are, I would honestly say, at the tail end of that rebuild. Or at least where they are, they're, where they're bad, necessarily. Where they're really bad. After this year, and maybe even this year itself, is when they'll get really competitive and start being fun to watch. They were fun to watch last year, but there'll be even more of that. So, before we get into that, let's start off at the beginning. In 21-22, after making the Stanley Cup Finals in June, this team plummeted. They went 22-49-11 for 55 points. They were 32nd in the NHL. Dead last. Brutal season. Uh, I remember their goalies were terrible. Um, Cole Caulfield had a really rough start to the year. They fire Dominic Ducharme. He comes in, scores a consistent amount, then gets hurt. But overall, it was a very rough year. But it was the building blocks of, or I guess it was the first step in where this team was going to go. They got uh, Juraj Slavkovsky first overall in that year. Um, they also acquired Kirby Doc as well. Uh, and then in 22-23, um, they got better. Because honestly, no matter how bad they were, um, there's no worse than 32. So it was only up from there. Uh, they went 31-45-6 for 68 points. They were 28th in the NHL. They were, I believe, 5th worst. Uh, they ended up selecting David Reinbacker 5th overall, which whether you want to say it was a good pick or not, um, I think Reinbacker is going to do a lot of good things for Montreal for sure. Um, I like that overall. They also, I forgot to mention they took Philip Mieser uh, in 2022. But in 23-24, they went 30-36-16 for 76 points. Now, even though they improved by 8 points, uh, they still finished 28th. So they didn't improve standings-wise, but they did a lot better on the ice. And they were probably more competitive than we give them credit to that last year. Uh, they take Demidoff and Michael Hayes who Demidoff obviously is going to spend a year in the KHL, then probably come over. Hayes is going to take a little bit before he gets to that level. But overall, they've made very good draft selections and honestly very good moves over the last three seasons, signing guys to contracts that will work out in their favor down the road. Honestly, Ken Hughes, I know that me and Habs fans have had our doubts, but with a lot of different things that we've talked about over the years, but I really do think that Ken Hughes has done a terrific job at building this Canadiens roster. And I think that he's not, they're not honestly far off from being competitive and getting back into the race again. First off, the guys they brought in, the guys they let go. It's not a long list for either. Uh, their departures, Nate Pearson, Jesse Olonen, uh, Jonathan Kovacevic, and then Jordan Harris. So again, obviously not a long list there. Those were all guys who were a part of the rebuild, obviously are not a part of this future in Montreal. The arrivals, you got Alex Bear Boulette and Patrick Laine. I think those are the only two that are notable that I have in here. Then they did bring in a few other guys that were kind of just depth guys, but they aren't in my depth chart uh, that are worth talking about. But overall, uh, again, I will get into Laine in a little bit, but there's some really good ads that they got there in those two guys. Boulette, good depth guy. Laine, has a resume that makes you think that he could be exciting. We shall see. And overall, again, I don't think Montreal needed to do a lot. They signed Slavkovsky on July 1st, and I think that's really all they did, um, apart from acquiring Liney a few year, a few years, a few weeks back in August. So again, I think they've done a really good job, and I think that honestly, I don't see them being coming to the playoffs or you know maybe even finishing above eighth this year unless a team has a huge crash out. But I do think that they will be better, 100%. Uh, so when you look at their projected lineups, these are from the Hockey News, by the way, not mine. I just want to say that because uh, I don't necessarily agree with everything the Hockey News does. Uh, first line, Garash Levkovsky, Nick Suzuki, Cole Caulfield. Second line, Alex Newhook, Kirby Doc, and Patrick Laine. So not a, not a bad top six. And, and the only issue that I see here, and I know that the Hockey News talked about it a little bit in their article that I'm going to read later on, but, again, the way I see Montreal, if they're healthy, they're better. They're 100% better. But the issue that Montreal has dealt with the last couple of seasons, in, including dating back before they started becoming really bad, was injuries. The team would just get hurt, and they would never be able to, 
um, and, and they really struggled with that. If this team can stay healthy, I think they could finish higher than 8th in the Atlantic. I think they could. I don't know if they come close to the playoffs, but I think they'll at least be competitive because that's a pretty good top six. First line's terrific. As long as Suzuki stays at that level that he took last year, Caulfield can take another step and score maybe a 30-goal season. And Slavkovsky looks even even half of what he was in the second half of the season. I think that first line's terrific. So, again, I think they've done a really good job, and I think that that first line is going to be that first line for the future unless Demidov comes in and takes that first line center role. But you know, we'll talk about that later. Second line, Newhook, Doc, Line A. That is an interesting line because those are all players who faced injuries this past year. Line A did. Doc missed almost all year last year. And Newhook was a guy who also faced injuries. So, again, if they can stay healthy, that can be terrific. I think Doc Doc played well in that first season with Montreal in 22-23. It's easy to forget that he's there because he got hurt last year. And he obviously uh, hardly played except for like two games in the beginning of the season. But regardless, I think if Doc can stay healthy, I think he can do a good job. And again, with Lion A, if he can stay healthy, he could probably get 30, 35 goals, maybe even more than that. Um, I definitely think that that's possible. But again, just got to stay healthy. Your bottom six, Josh Anderson, Christian Dvorak, Joshua Waugh. Um, fourth line, Raphael Harvey Pennard, Jake Evans, and Brendan Gallagher. And then for some extra guys, you have Michael Bezzetta, Owen Beck, and, uh, and uh, Joel Armia. So, not bad. Uh, I mean, I think you got a lot of some young guys in that mix, like Waugh, Harvey Pennard is a guy that I really like. I think Waugh is a def definitely a wild card for sure, or it's Roy. I think it's Waugh. Someone got mad at me in my Kings video because I said Roy Waugh. My bad. But regardless, I think that he could do something this year. He could be very interesting. I believe this is his rookie season. There's a lot of guys that I do think they're going to try and trade. Anderson, that contract's brutal. You can't deny that. Uh, you gonna, you're going to want to trade him at some point. They could get something for Dvorak. Maybe if he has a really good season, they could. Um, but again, I think a lot of those guys are, are there for a few more years or at least uh, until their contracts are up, especially Josh Anderson because they've desperately tried to move that contract and they can't. So I, I think that, to be honest, uh, the forward course, not, not too bad, to be honest. Uh, when you look at their defense, it's it's solid. It's solid. And and I hope that if the guys that the Habs fans are hoping that will pan out, pan out, then it's a really good blue line. Uh, first pairing, Matheson and Goulet. Second pairing, Hudson and Savard. Third pairing, Jakai and Barron. And then extra guy is Logan Mailu. Obviously, there's a few other guys who could come in there too, like uh, Struble, Ryan Backer could come in this year. Uh, but regardless, it's not a bad blue line. It's not. It's actually pretty solid. Is it one of the best in the league? No, but it's not that bad. It's, it's a blue line that I think has a lot of potential. It's it's a blue line that I think that when all of these players are in their prime, it's really good. Hudson coming into his rookie season, there's a lot of hype around him from Habs fans. I don't know if I believe in all of the hype, but we'll see what he can do. I know he's going to be a really good defenseman. Um, Jakai, physical, signed into a good contract. He knows what he can do. Barrow and I like as well. I wouldn't rule out the fact that they trade Matheson this coming this coming season. If 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 a team's looking for a defenseman and they can get the right package for Matheson, like remember Matheson had a really good season last year, but he's not signed to the term that the Canadians are looking for. I guess unless you want to re-sign him, um, you know, at the end of the season. But at least as of right now, I think they're still going to be like they're not going to be like bad bad, but they're still going to be competitive, but still be towards the bottom of the league and probably still selling at the deadline. If you can find a good package for Matheson, I would say take it, honestly. Because if you traded Matheson this past deadline, it could have gotten the Monaghan return. I'm just being honest. You probably could have. Um, and you could probably do that again if you move him at this year's trade deadline. So something to think about there for Habs fans. Um, there hasn't been much talk about it, but I think it could happen. Your goalies, uh, Montembault and Primo. Primo in his make-or-break season, he's got to convert to the NHL fully. He's got to play at that level. Montembeau, we know what he can do. He's a good goaltender. Um, I, I have nothing bad to say about Montembeau. He's a good goalie for sure. Um, again, I think that St. Louis done a great job. I think that the power play is going to get a lot better in Montreal. Uh, St. Louis managing that with the power play coach, Lion A. Uh, I think it's going to be really exciting. And again, I said that. I think Ken Hughes is terrific. I think he's done a good job. I, there hasn't been over... The last three years, I would say, there hasn't really been a move that has been 
I've been against that Ken Hughes has made. Uh, and there's not a lot of GMs in the league that I can say that for. So I give a lot of credit to him. Now we'll move into the Hockey News' Fantasy Guide, which is the yearbook as well for 24-25. Uh, the Hockey News has the Habs finishing 8th in the Atlantic. <clears throat> Sorry. It has their cup odds at 65-1. to And their biggest X factor is the number one line is to keep producing. Uh, so we already talked about that. Doc must stay healthy. And Hudson has to show that he can pro- perform at the NHL level for the Habs to have any shot at the playoffs. Anderson has to deliver a rebound season with three years left on his contract at a 5.5 salary. So again, as I said, you're not trading Anderson. He's probably going to be there for the long run. Unless you get into the last year or two of that deal, he's staying. And I already talked about most of that. Like, again, the number one line's got to produce. Hudson's got to take a step in his rookie year. I think all those are possible. But it's a matter of, can they do that? And I think they can. I definitely think they can. But again... If the Habs aren't healthy, you can just count them, count them in for another really bad year. Uh, if they can stay healthy, then I think this team could be competitive and fun to watch. I think they're going to be fun to watch anyways. But if they can stay healthy, maybe they surprise people and come closer than we think. Again, I know that I've had my differences with Habs fans. I know that we may not agree on certain arguments that I'm not going to get into here because it's not relevant. But I definitely think this team has done a terrific job at building this roster and going in the right direction, and I think that overall, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but sometime down the road, they're going to be really competitive, and they're going to make the playoffs, and they're going to contend for a cup. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, make sure to like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. Tomorrow is the Nashville Predators. Back to schedule here. I kind of got behind yesterday because I was busy. The only thing I could do was the dry saddle deal, so you got two season previews today. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.